بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله جل وعلا وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this episode we are going to continue our discussion regarding the principles of understanding The principles of understanding as we said can be classified into three main steps The first step is to get the right and authentic sources of Al-Islam. The second main step is to understand those sources properly. And the third step is to have the correct implementation of those sources. Once we have or once we go through these steps, we will end up with the correct belief. We will end up with the correct practice of Al-Islam. Brothers and sisters, I am insisting that those who seek knowledge, those who would like to study Al-Islam in a very deep way, to study Al-Islam in a very structured way. Once you visualize, once you have the structure in front of you, once you have the framework that we are talking about in front of you, and you start attending some lectures about Al-Islam, you will be able to bring those lectures and those topics that you are studying and put them in the right perspective. After some time, once you look at the whole picture, the whole framework, you will be able to identify your weaknesses. Many people are deceiving themselves. Many people are studying hard and they are spending time to study Al-Islam, but they are achieving little. Why? Because of lack of a structured and systematic way in studying Al-Islam. Once you have that, as I said, you will be able to fill in the gaps within this framework and then you will have the right framework and then you can build on it many brothers they focus on aqeedah 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 but they don't know anything about usul al-fiqh many brothers they study fiqh and they continue studying fiqh they don't know about usul al-fiqh they don't know about aqeedah they don't know anything about arabic language many people are studying courses on usul al-tafsir Many people are studying courses on the science of hadith, but they don't know the link between those sciences. What has usul al-tafsir to do with the mustalah? For example, if I want to understand the Quran more, what do I need? Do I need to study the science of hadith, for example, or do I need to do something else? Many people start to study the transactions in al-Islam, but they are unaware of certain prerequisites. Many people take courses on how the fuqaha used to deal with matters of differences, but they lack the fundamental principles behind the way the fuqaha took these rules from the sources of al-Islam. Many people are confused in terms of the sources of al-Islam themselves. And that's why, please, brothers and sisters, Make sure that you study Al-Islam in a very structured way. The way we are presenting it is the way that scholars have taught it. If you go to the books of Usul al-Fiqh, you will see that all of the books or most of the books in Usul al-Fiqh start with mentioning the adilla of the Sharia. And after that, they start mentioning some certain principles to be applied on the adilla in order to understand those adilla and in order to extract the ahkam from the adilla, the various rulings from the adilla. But we are not delivering this course in a very high level 
an or an academic standard we are delivering it in a way that can appeal to most of the audience and hence the brothers and sisters who are not seeking knowledge who are just lay people working in other professions engineering or doctors or whatever they don't think that they don't need this topic no in reality they need this topic in order for them to understand islam properly we have mentioned some of the challenges that some of the brothers and sisters are facing and we said how can you respond to those challenges if you don't understand the background behind many or various rulings of al-islam that's why brothers and sisters make sure you have the structure in front of you and whatever you study in al-islam make sure that it fits in the right place in this framework jazakumullahu khaira now uh, in this episode or the remaining of this episode i will touch on one principle need to be observed to understand the text we said that the textual evidences or the main sources of al-islam the quran the authentic sunnah and the authentic ijma or al-ijma the consensus of the scholars then we said we need to understand those textual evidences correctly we need to understand this scripture correctly and we gave certain principles or we gave one principle which is what let me read the first principle the second principle which we are going to touch on now the first principle we said to have faith and to submit to the entirety of the scripture means the entirety of al quran and the sunnah and we have explained that in length the second principle is to believe that the scripture encompasses all that we need for our deen and our dunya to believe to have faith that this scripture encompasses all what we need in this dunya and in the hereafter all what we need to attain success in this dunya all what we need to attain success in the hereafter the third principle is to refer to arabic language when you want to understand al quran and as sunnah and we will explain that inshallah in length and the fourth principle is to refer to the scholars and refer to their understanding of al quran and as sunnah we will explain this inshallah in the near future now this principle that we are covering today which is to have faith that al quran and as sunnah or the scripture encompasses everything that we need in order to obtain success in this dunya and success in the hereafter some people might ask a question what is the difference between this principle and the previous principle this principle in fact is a complementary to the previous principle the previous principle as we read is to have faith in the entirety of al quran in the entirety of as sunnah in the entirety of both al quran and as sunnah but this principle that we are talking about today is to believe that everything we need has been mentioned or is mentioned in al quran and as sunnah i will elaborate more on the difference after the break insha allah stay with us assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah <laughs> Islamic International School presents Your goal, Your goal it should be Islam. Islam. It should be according to the teachings of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The generation next. In the Quran, Allah says, "Say he is Allah the one and only. We belong to Allah and to him is our return." Remember the grave. Remember that. Remember that. Their purpose, their vision, their goal. Islam teaches us peace and we should implement it practically in our lives. We have the deen al haq with us, the religion of truth. This, this is, is the, the deen, deen from Allah from subhanahu wa ta'ala. Watch presentations by these young orators of Islamic International School. Haqa Gazdar, Humaid Armar, Zuha Qureshi, Kaab Gazdar, Hiba Sayyad, Ghazi Chauhan, Fatima Kodia, Saad Siddiqui, Fahima Sheikh, and Farik Naik.
the last and final instruction manual for us human beings, human beings, it is the glorious Quran. The do's and don'ts are mentioned. Old generation next dies with iman, taqwa, and striving enshrined in their oratory and dynamism. In potential generation, every Friday at 7:30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 8:30 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Dialogue, discussion, discussion, debate, 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 rebuttal, rebuttal, conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words in Crossfire every Friday at 8:30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 9:30 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Values to adopt. The most important thing in our deen is aqidah. Teachings to implement. Second to that is morals. Principles to pursue. There are several reasons why do kids lie. Here to execute the doctrines of Islam to make every move successful. A visitor at home. Next on Peace TV. Welcome back brothers and sisters. Just before the break we raised a question. If someone asked what is the difference between the first principle that we have mentioned and the second principle that we are talking about now. The first principle is to have faith and to submit to the entirety of the scripture to the entirety of the Quran and Sunnah. The second principle is talking about having faith that the Quran and Sunnah encompass everything that we need to attain success. We have the Quran and Sunnah on this side and we have what we need on this side. We say that the Quran and Sunnah, we need to have faith and to submit into the entirety of the Quran was Sunnah. So we need to submit to the entirety of the Quran and the Sunnah. But this does not mean that something other than the Quran and the Sunnah can be a source for legislation or can be a source for us to attain success in this dunya. Yes, we are not neglecting anything from the Quran and the Sunnah but we need to refer to the Quran and the Sunnah and something else other than the Quran and Sunnah. This is why we need the second principle. The second principle says that, yes, you are referring to the Quran and the Sunnah, but make sure that you don't refer to something else other than the Quran and the Sunnah. Why? Because all what you need to attain success in this dunya and all what you need to attain success in the hereafter, all of it is in Al-Quran and As-Sunnah. This is what it means. Be careful. The seculars and the liberals, they say that, yes, we are referring to Al-Quran and the Sunnah, but we are referring to other things. We are referring to other values. We are referring to other principles are not extracted from Al-Quran and the Sunnah. And so once they refer to other principles other than Al-Quran and As-Sunnah, they give these principles the same weight of Al-Quran and As-Sunnah, and they start to make a compromise between those principles and the principles mentioned in the Quran and As-Sunnah, and that is a big mistake. Now, once we say that Al-Quran and As-Sunnah encompass everything that we need to attain success in this dunya and in the hereafter, someone might say, Hold on, success in the hereafter, yes, we understood that. But success in this dunya, we uh, question that. Because we need technology. Technology is not mentioned in Al-Quran and nor in As-Sunnah. Computing, computers, it's not mentioned in Al-Quran nor it is mentioned in As-Sunnah. Medicine, advancement in roads, advancement in communication, 
media, etc. These things are not mentioned in Al-Quran and Al-Sunnah, and hence we need to refer to other sources other than Al-Quran and Al-Sunnah. Now, this for some people might look trivial, but it is a genuine question. It is a genuine doubt. As we say the number of times that the biggest challenge Muslims are facing these days is the challenge of secularism and the challenge of liberalism. Maybe the challenge of Christianity or Judaism is not that strong, but in my view, but the challenge of secularism and liberalism in my view are or is more. Now, what does that mean? The liberals and the seculars, they say that Yes, you can refer to Al-Quran and the Sunnah in order to success, in order to attain success in your hereafter. But this dunya, in order to attain success and development and advancement in this life, you need to refer to other systems. Other systems that are not taken from the Quran, nor they are taken from the Sunnah. And if you remember, once the Ottoman Empire, became weak, became very weak, and the scholars at that time, they were very rigid, and they do not have the tool of al-ijtihad to extract different rulings from al-Quran as sunnah different rulings that are needed to treat and to deal the changes that they are experiencing because of modernity. So, the people faced certain circumstances and certain situations. They go to the scholars, and the scholars, because of their restricted way of understanding Al-Quran and As-Sunnah, they were unable to provide them with solutions. So the people were forced to go outside the jurists or outside the scholars, outside Al-Quran and As-Sunnah, to seek help and to seek support. And they started to import some of the laws made by non Muslim countries or by Western countries. And then slowly, slowly, they start to put more trust in the laws or in the values imported from non-Muslim countries or Western countries. After some time, the people start to have the feeling that Al-Quran and As-Sunnah are limited to give us success in the hereafter, and they are not going to be useful for us in this dunya. That is absolutely wrong. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, in Al-Quran, مَا فَرَّطْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شيء, We have not neglected anything in this book. We have not missed anything in this book. Everything is mentioned in this book. In one of the hadith, the Sahabi said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Wasallam at one point taught us everything that we need. And he never left anything, including some birds in the heaven, except the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us something about them. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died after he conveyed the message. The message that has been sent to him is a message for us as Muslims to be a successful nation. كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله you were the best of nations ever raised to mankind, enjoying the good and forbid the evil, and believe in Allah Jalla wa ala. So we are selected by Allah Jalla wa ala to be the best of nations, and we have to be the best of nations. And hence we need to strike a balance between the dunya and the akhirah. Of course, the akhirah is more important than the dunya, but we have to be superior in this dunya in order to make the law of Allah Jalla wa ala superior to any other system. The law of Allah Jalla wa ala is the law of the creator, is the law of justice. The law that gives every single one justice in this dunya and in the hereafter. The law that gives every single one tranquility and peace in this dunya and in the hereafter, which is more important. Hence, if we just focus on the akhirah and we do not attain or we do not try our best to Make sure that the law of the Creator is superior to any other law, then we are going to be sinful. And that's why Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, three ayat, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ He is the one who sent his messenger, 
بالهدى ودين الحق بالهدى with the guidance and the true religion in order to make it superior dominant over any other system that law is the law of the creator hence brothers and sisters we need to refer to Al-Quran and As-Sunnah and only to Al-Quran and As-Sunnah okay what is the answer with respect to what we need outside Al-Quran and As-Sunnah in terms of our worldly affairs we see that Al-Quran and As-Sunnah commanded us to reflect upon the creation of Allah Jalla wa'ala and to take the principle the universal or the divine principles the divine universal principles while we are pondering upon the creation of Allah Jalla wa'ala إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأول الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم Indeed in the creation of heavens and earth آيات signs for those who have intellect those who have minds those who think those who remember Allah sitting, standing, moving etc. So Allah جل وعلا is commanding us in various places in the Quran to reflect upon the creation of Allah Jalla wa'ala which means that we can extract the principles on which Allah Jalla wa'ala created this life those principles are related to technology are related to science but the most important thing we need to take those principles in order to make sure that the law of Allah Jalla wa'ala the system of Allah Jalla wa'ala is superior to any other system the last thing before we stop or before we conclude this session and we conclude this principle is many people say but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the very famous hadith hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Antum a'lamu bi umuri dunyakum you are more knowledgeable on your worldly affairs they said that in the matters related to our life technology, medicine, etc. We need to refer to something other than the Quran and as sunnah because the Prophet said that. But they don't stop here. They said that we need to refer to things related to politics, things related to sociology and other types of sciences. We need to refer to other than Al Quran and as sunnah Simply we say brothers and sisters that Al-Quran and As-Sunnah spoke about many things as we have mentioned before and that's why I'm just concluding it quickly. Al-Quran and As-Sunnah, they mentioned many things related to politics, to, related to social life, related to medicine, related to technology, mentioned so many things. So if those things are mentioned in the Quran and As-Sunnah, we need to take them from Al-Quran and As-Sunnah. If they are not mentioned in Al-Quran and As-Sunnah, it is the miracle that Al-Islam, unlike Christianity or any other religion, Al-Quran and As-Sunnah encouraged us through this hadith and many other hadith to what? To explore what is there in our life. To explore what we need in our life. To explore the universal principles. How Allah Jalla wa'ala created the earth. How Allah Jalla wa'ala created the heavens and what laws Allah Jalla wa'ala put in the heaven and in the other types of creations. We need to explore these laws in order to make use of them for our benefit in this dunya and in order to make use of those laws to make sure that the deen of Allah Jalla wa'ala, the system of Allah Jalla wa'ala is superior to any other system. This, what does this hadith mean? This hadith is a miracle because this hadith, unlike Christianity or unlike Judaism, is encouraging us to look and ponder and extract the rulings. Antum a'lamu, you are more knowledgeable about your worldly affairs. However, if there is something that has been mentioned in Al-Quran and the Sunnah, then we need to ask ourselves why Allah Jalla wa'ala mentioned it, why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned it, why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you are more knowledgeable in your worldly affairs. Means that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that Allah Jalla wa'ala is providing you with this solution. So just go for this solution. If there are other things that Allah Jalla wa'ala did not 
provide you with a solution, then explore on them and extract the solutions. I hope that I have clarified the myth around this hadith. And once we understand this, we will understand that there is no place for secularism in our deen, in our system. That should be enough, insha'Allah. Let me stop here. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.